Okay. Let's call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the North Hudson Public Works Committee. This meeting has been properly noticed. It's been changed from our normal night of last evening to this evening, but uh, it was properly noticed and we are in compliance with all open meeting statutes. The roll call will show that all of the committee members are present and in addition our village engineer and our public works supervisor. First agenda item is our minutes from our previous meeting which was held on 17 January of this year. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? I'll move approval. Is there a second? I will second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from 17 January. All in favor, aye. Aye. And opposed, same sign, and that is carried. And with that, we will segue immediately to our village engineer. Shopyard's capital projects, you have some information for us. Thank you. And then some uh, more pertinent legislative information, I understand. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> so basically at last month's meeting, um, talked about gathering some information from the city of Hudson pertaining to some fire flows in the shopyards. Um, so Mark has contacted them and we have received that information and that is on the second page of the handout. Gives you a, you know, a spreadsheet, some of the fire flows that they've done in the past um, in the shopyards and they're highlighted with an asterisk on the left hand side. So we have <clears throat> basically on the northern end Oh my goodness, Kevin, I'm, I'm a little concerned. This looks to me like it's an engineer spec. <coughs> Can you okay. interpret this for a layman? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to explain all this information here. But So it looks like back in 99, 2000, um, you know, they went out to the site, they used some equipment, and they actually uh, flowed the hydrants to come up with these results. And what it's broken down to is you have a static pressure on the hydrant, which is basically, you know, when yeah. there's no water flowing. And that's relative to whatever the elevation in the tower is. So, if, you know, down in this area in the asterisk, you know, we're looking at around 70 PSI. That's with no hydrants flowing. The residual is measured when the hydrants are flowing. So that gives you an idea of how much of a drop there is in pressure when the hydrants under, when they're under flow condition. When you say hydrants, hydrants plural, that means what? One hydrant right there or multiple hydrants? I'm just so trying they, to follow what you're saying. So they, they actually flow one hydrant and then they have another hydrant either either side of it that they measure what the residual pressure drops down to. All right. There's actually a gauge on that hydrant. Okay. That yeah. Yep. So, you know, the the bigger the difference between the two numbers, it gives you an idea that the more friction loss that there is in the pipe, um, how much, you know, usually the flow will drop off per se. And way on the right-hand side gives you an idea of what they actually flow, what it actually flowed at, what the gauge indicated when it's open, you know, wide open. So way up on the northern end, uh, so we had a static of 71 psi. It dropped down to 49 when it was flowing, and we had 890 gallons per minute coming out of that hydrant, and that was with you know the tower being about 80 percent full the level okay I, I just need to un again I I'm sorry but no, that's I'm, fine. I'm not an engineer 890 gallons per minute is that good or is that bad what, what are we comparing that to okay so just so you know everything the kind of the standard is is you know you flow the hydrant um, for fire flow purposes 
you have to calculate what it actually would be at 20 psi. So like when they bring a tanker out, they'll actually pull water out of the system down to 20 pounds per, per inch. So you'll actually get like down below um, the last one on here, down by well at that time was Thompson casket. Look way on the right hand side, <clears throat> it has 1,550 gallons per minute at 20 psi. But the residual is 36 on the left hand side. That's what actually the pressure dropped down, but you got to convert that to 20 psi because you know that's that's the way the industry. No, it's 36. It's 51. At Thompson casket. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, 51. I'm sorry, 51. I was looking at the one. Well, that's just, good because I was going to say I don't see 36 here. Yeah, I was looking at the one just. <clears> to, <throat> Fox Street. Oh, I see above it. Yes. Yeah, all right, above all right. it. So I had a residual of 51, but then we have to convert it to 20 psi. And that's where they come up with 1,550 gallons per minute. All right. Um, so realistically, the flow, they don't have that information here, but it's probably pretty close to what you would see up on the northern end of about 890 GPM. And part of the reason that one's so much better is because it's a lower elevation, so it gets more gravity effect from the water tower. Is that? Well, it's... It, this number here, I, I, I think... Did they do a test on that on the north end one? Because that doesn't have the same... You don't have any PSI with the yeah. north end one. So that was just done under um, with the residual pressure? Yeah, so that okay. wasn't converted to the 20 yeah. PSI. Like what so you in, would see. in all likelihood, it's going to be higher than 890. Right. Yep. yep. It's going to be closer to that, around that... But nonetheless, I mean, well, as fascinating as it is, it doesn't... The question is, we have approximately 1,500 gallons per minute flow right now down there, right. and it's recommended by the uh, fire chief that for fire protection we need 3,500 gallons per minute. So Correct. Um, that's where I was trying to go. What does this compare to? That's, all, yeah. that's what we're at. That's okay. right here in the all front. Right. So, I mean, all the rest of it is not to cut you off, but it's, well, it's engineering no jargon. interest to me, really. Or just me, anyway. He's just trying to tell you how he got to those numbers. I trust him implicitly <laughs> on how he got to those numbers. I don't think there's anybody here that can refute how he got to those numbers. <laughs> so in the back room with alchemy, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like what Mark was alluding to, or no, yeah, Mark I was alluding to, um, Jim, you know, I did contact Jim Fry at City Water Department. And in their industrial parks, they have a goal of meeting 3,500 gallons per minute. And he suggested that the village, you know, if there was any future water improvements done in this area, that that's what the village should try to achieve. Sure. So, what's so, the so it's really, what's, what's the assessment policy on improvements like that down there? Is it would it be like on a street? Yeah, since there's existing services down there right now, um, they would be paid for the replacement, uh, so the village would actually pick the costs up for those because through there's... through their sinking fund. Okay. The replacement fund that they have in place. So it wouldn't be as it uh, a new project gets assessed, an improvement uh, doesn't get assessed. Yeah, the replacement would not get would not be assessed. Okay. Yeah. But if we do streets and we improve the streets people get assessed yeah the <clears throat> the curb and gutter if it's if it's under 20 years there's like a pro rata factor that's used and you know you you have to figure that in but there typically is if it's over 20 years the village does pick up the cost for the curb and gutter and the resurfacing well if it's I mean, over I'm 20 talking years sewer and water stuff if they if they change if we would do uh, we talked about like lake drive and different places like that Mm -hmm. No, the, the 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 residential gets assessed there for that, right? If if there was no curb yeah, in there, there's none there. Yeah, if there's no curb there now, they would be assessed 100. percent But if it's a replacement, then depending on if it's over 20 years, the village would pick it up. If it's less than, then it's like a pro rata factor mm -hmm. that's used. So if it's 10 years, you know, it would be half. You know, a little bit different, but. <clears throat> 
that's the way the assessment policy is is written so what are we learning from this is it a heads up that if we do improvements in the future the recommendation is as articulated on the on the first page is that is that what it is yeah that, that we're not to the recommendation and that's where we ought to be right I mean if we ever if we do an improvements down there we want to try to achieve that 3,500 gallons per minute can you explain the um, on the uh, um, creating a tax d district down there the timing of it in, in the last part of your um, uh, memo here about there there are time, some time restrictions as to when the expenditures can occur and how long the district can be in existence um, so explain that part to me we did the timing aspect if we do any planning for this um, or any engineering obviously something what sort of planning do we need to be put in place and what kind of advantage do we have if we do get that in place so if you so if you do create a TIF district or okay. a TID yep. um, you know once you do put that in place you have a certain time period to do expenditures like the sewer and water improvements in that area there's like a you know there would okay. be a time clock that would be yep. ticking and then there's you know a certain lifespan of the TIF too you know if you have so many years that the village could actually acquire the funds um, and I want to say I do have that explain does everybody know what a TID is okay yeah so, so tell there's some and tell there's somebody that's pretty potential if there's an establishment of a tax increment district and there's an expenditure of infrastructure improvements and then there's nobody coming in there to pay the cost of that you wind up with a distressed tax increment district right and, and typically the way it's done is you you know the threshold is you need to have new value coming in before you would actually right. create the TIF right. you'd have you know a new building per se mm -hmm. obviously where the one you know burnt down is probably so going to be the threshold get that if we the only thing we can really do in anticipation of that timing wise is to have some engineering done in case a building comes in but we don't know what size building that might be or right yeah that that's kind of you know the way we were looking at it is is you know there has been some discussion that potentially there is going to be new building we don't know when um, they could come in mm -hmm. you know over the winter or fall or whatever but you know maybe the village would want to look at at least starting the engineering and the planning for the project well um, the other aspect I suppose we could do is if say a, a building of that substantial nature comes in and um, in our in our services aren't quite up to speed we um, we don't issue a building permit until we get up to speed mm -hmm. I'm a little concerned about starting to do anything um, on this without really knowing and working under the assumption something's going to be in there or that we're in distress down there yeah um, I don't want to cut anybody our existing taxpayers and, and um, um, building owners down there put them at a disadvantage because of something we don't have but I don't know if we've got that situation per se right now at least talking to one of them he's he's all right with the way the services are right now mm -hmm. so I, I I'm I I don't know where we go with this right now other than try to stay abreast of it a little bit that's my opinion because I don't you know yeah, I mean, developing we, the engineering for it um, I, I'm I'm supposed not much will change over time I mean the the where the services are going to go it's where they go um, I mean I suppose we could but we don't know if it's going to be a TID district or not um, no it, I guess the way we look at it is it's just you know the village would be in a position you know if there was a building that did come forth that they could you know the plans would be basically shovel ready mm -hmm. so that they could you know look at starting All right with that scenario what sort of engineering cost do you think we might have involved in that project for the you know the design portion based on you know a project of around four four hundred thousand dollars that would be for both phases yep. um, I think you're looking around between 20 to twenty five thousand dollars okay 
for the design portion of it. Mm -hmm. That would potentially save us what in terms of time? If, if, if that was done in advance, as, as you, you indicated. You probably, you know, you're looking at about two to three months worth of work. By the time, you know, you go out, you do all the survey work, um, you know, and put the plans together, coordination with utilities, you know, if there's any easements. If, that if this was, if, if I, now I'm going to interject my opinion about the prospect of a new building coming down there. If I, I think the building we're talking about, the build is going to be by a, a current um, um, business Probably down there, right? All right, so they're familiar with what we got going and what we're working with. If it was a situation where we felt there was going to be a strong need by somebody brand new to North Hudson coming in and maybe put up a big building, then I might be more inclined to say, you know, here we have the plans ready. We've been just waiting for somebody like you to come in here. But I, I don't even, given the current circumstances, I don't foresee some um, new influence down there i think we're dealing with existing residents down there and they're familiar with what we have going in a two or three month period um, of getting plans developed i don't know if that's going to make or break a deal down I think there that's a pretty valid point yeah you know what i mean I, and i don't think it would put anybody at a disadvantage or we're taking advantage of anybody because i i um like i said the ones I know down there and possibly the potential one guy who's going to build understands where we're at with things up here. Yeah, he's been property owner there for quite a while. Yeah. I don't mean to wander off in the weeds with this question, but backing sure. up just a little bit and looking at the data that you've got here, one of the questions that uh, is on the questionnaire as far as property and casualty insurance is always a distance to a fire hydrant but I've never seen anything that says, and what is the water capacity of the fire hydrant? Is there any potential for savings in insurance rates for either residential or commercial property if we have a better f water flow at any given hydrant? There is the potential, yes. I mean, <clears throat> the village has a certain, they call it ISO rating, mm -hmm. and you know, if it was brought up. What does that stand for, ISO? Oh, boy, I can't remember right offhand. Hey, you're the engineer. I, 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 I always work with the ISO rating. I know. Well, for example, Kevin, how many, how many buildings are sprinkled down there? There probably is, I would venture, probably none of them down yeah, there. I think that's that's a situation so, so while well, your question is valid, if you're looking at an advantage right for a building, is perhaps if the particular building owner wanted to go to a sprinkler system, he might be able to get a better rate, but that's really not our business, if you ask me. If we're providing adequate fire flow and uh, to get whatever at a minimum level, then then that gets into the ISO rating Kevin's talking about. Well, I understand that. I was asking more from a global standpoint. Is there any opportunity for village residents to have of a rate a better rate on their insurance if the village has better flow and I think I'm hearing the answer is probably no if anything it would be for these you know yeah, these buildings down, down in this immediate yeah, area okay now we have even along 35 that um, up on up on the there's not a real great water flow up there you're talking on the on yeah, our side. side, like when I did the car wash, we had to put an auxiliary pump in to yeah, get the water yeah, pressure up a little higher. Yeah. 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 Is that because of it elevation? was kind of low. No, it's just some of the places are, it's you just, know. Yeah, and actually, uh, when the car wash was stuck in, that was before we looped from A Street over yeah, to the H2 property. Not proper so. planning, timing of things going in. Yeah. Not, not, a, not a large issue, but there are going to be pockets around North Hudson that, as Kevin's chart indicates where you're going to have different yeah. types of yeah. performance. Especially in place you have dead ends or, yeah. Yeah. or end of cycle. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing with this is we were looking at doing some, you know, water main looping, which will definitely help with increasing yeah. the amount of water that's down there that's available, if and it will increase the back water. Back to this point, if, if somebody has a different opinion, that express it now, as, as I sit here now, I don't know what we can do to go forward with anything 
specific, any sort of action or activity, um, considering the costs. If money wasn't an object, sure. certainly go ahead and do it. But I don't know if we're putting anybody at a disadvantage or treating anybody unfairly, and I know we're not prepared to spend that kind of money right now. And I don't even heard a scenario where it would be at an advantage to get the plans in place and to do any advanced planning. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Okay. Not to be ignored. I mean, I, I again, no, if if, no. if if somebody if we had a somebody down there who couldn't operate their business or, and they're paying taxes, then we'd be obligated to take a really hard look at it. But we we haven't been approached at least at a meeting. You know, I don't know what you get other feedback. So yeah, I don't want to come it across like we're not trying to keep everybody with the services they're paying for. Well, in summary, Mark, I think what you're alluding to is the final paragraph. The village may want to start considering the planning and engineering, and this would allow a more timely basis, but I think you're addressing the more timely basis and who is the likely person that's going to come to us with a project in the future, and that is not going to be a disadvantage. So. Yeah, I, in this economic climate, yeah. I can't speculate on somebody rushing down to I don't, I don't inhabit disagree. the shop yards. I don't think Stan disagrees. No, I do not. Yeah. Thank Good you work. for yes. your input. Yeah. Yeah. We talked a little bit last month about the, uh, the focus on energy, and we've got some data back that uh, Mark has <clears throat> gathered with respect to energy audit action items at the... Uh, Public Works Garage. Mark, I'll turn it over to you to walk us through this summary. It's basically all got a memo, should be in front of you. Uh, basically, with the audit, they recommended that we. I don't know where I put mine right now. We're talking uh, about just a garage. Yeah, this right? is just a yep. garage. The Village, hall, village uh, Board already uh, approved everything for the Village Hall, and that's already been underway. Most of it's completed. Uh, for the garage, what we did, the first thing you're see is a memo that I took to finance and the village board, actually, that this went to finance. It was sent back to us that there, uh, this is for doing basically what, uh, what the energy audit, uh, the advice for the village was, was changing out the, uh, current fixtures up there with more efficient, uh, fluorescent fixtures. They recommended T8s, which you can see we had uh, three different uh, electrical contractors gave us price for replacing the uh, existing fixtures up there with the uh, four lamp T8 fluorescent fixtures. And the other recommendation was to have uh, occupancy sensors put on the lights so that way they would actually work when somebody came into the bays, when somebody left for a period of time, they'd shut off and would save us energy instead of having the lights on all the time. Uh, and you can basically see what the estimates were. Uh, well, what attracts my interest is the payback period. Once the, uh, we factor in the, the savings and the rebate from Focus on Energy, a payback of two and a half years hmm. is pretty attractive from my point of view. And basically this, and the thing, only thing with the T8 fixtures, and this is what we discussed, uh, they're not, they're a little worried about the height of the bays. They actually lowered lights down as much as they could. You know, we have to keep them above the heat, everything else. They actually, all the contractors recommending was actually going to six lamp, which would actually be the six bulb. Thanks for better view. And when we were discussing, discussing that, somebody in the audience who has a warehouse down in the shop yards, this basically had some lights put in. And he actually went with the T5s. And he was an ex-electrical contractor. It's actually Dan Barber. Uh, and he recommended that we look at the T5 fluorescents. And I actually went down and looked at those, and then I went back to the uh, the two lowest electricians on this bid and asked for them for bids on what the T5s would be. And uh, they're a little more expensive. You, you know, you can see, well, the only one we got a price back from was uh, Scott Fear uh, Electric. Uh, and basically it went from his for the T8s, he was at 1787 for the T5s. It's at 1863 but what they're saying is even at my recommendation at the bottom of our 
before the recommendation has it, using the Excel's numbers and everything else, it would take roughly about three years to recoup the cost. Contractors, both contractors told me they actually believe it would take less time than that because these lights are extremely efficient. And they're the T5s. Yeah, T5s. And they would the T5 be. T5 provides more candle power? Yeah. Is, they, is that why you're. It'll actually, it's actually, they're set up, they're, uh, they're basically set up for high bays, but right. they're actually more efficient for uh, candlelight thing. They're actually, instead of being eight foot long, they're only four foot long, but they actually give off quite a bit of light. Mm. If that's the efficient. case, why didn't the contractors bid it that way originally? Because was originally it? we asked them to bid what was in the energy for audit, and they recommended T8s. Excel, Excel recommended, recommended T8s. T8s. Okay. And we're actually looking at something that's even supposed to be more efficient that's out in the actual T5s. Well, then I'm curious why Excel recommended the T8s. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't. I think this maybe could be that they're... The T5s are so new coming out and everything else, they might not have seen, you know, what they're doing in the warehouses. I uh -huh. really don't know myself. So. Well, what do you want to do, gentlemen? I don't think this is too hard to agonize over, but uh, it's a matter of there, if there's money to, where are you going to get it from to do it? Where's your, uh, which page you read off of anyway here? Which? Is this your possible recommendation? The recommendation is right on the bottom of the memo page. Oh, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I'm going to move to have Scott Beer Electric replace the six existing light fixtures at the Public Works garage with five four lamp T5 fluorescent fixtures and one. Four lamp T8 fluorescent fixture at a cost not to exceed eighteen hundred and sixty three dollars. Second. We can beat it around at the board if we yep. want to. Uh, any additional discussion on that? To your to your question, Mark, of uh, funding it, uh, it would seem to me that we've got some uh, unused dollars this year in our snow plowing budget. Like I said, we can. That's so I made the. That's where I so far. So far. Kind of flippantly we said we're that, gonna, we know we're going to get slammed. But I think we'll wait till to see what we can do at finance where it comes. Yeah, from that's where we'll discuss it. But I, I, I just think on on the basis of the kind of payback period you've got on this, and then after that we're uh, we're paying dividends. I just think this is yeah, something we can't. I, agree. I'm, I don't mean to problem. I'm yep. just saying, barring some other reason, that we'll yep. I move. That's okay. my motion. Uh, we have a motion on the, uh, the floor. It's been seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Carried. And we will recommend uh, to finance that we proceed with this uh, recommendation, and ultimately that should go to the board then next month. Kevin, back to you with that. Um, Any additional items? Well, just one thing on the, uh, I guess we were, uh, get a phone call from Bill Zimmer, which is the DOT person that, um, for this region in regards to the STP funding for the uh, Wisconsin Street project. All right. The village had some design dollars that were uh, awarded to them. And I think I want to bring some information back to the committee at the next meeting. Um, there has been some changes in regards to design standards. Uh, they do require bicycle lanes now as of last fall. So I think we need to relook at that and see if the village is really interested in pursuing that, those design dollars for that project because it's going to entail widening the street out from mm -hmm. what you have there now to accommodate those facilities. So. so if we spend considerably more money to comply with the design standards, we would potentially get a, a, the, the small amount of the award. It's, it sounds like uh, yeah, it would be a main switch. May not uh, be very Well, we'll beneficial. discuss it next month. You'll bring it to us? Yeah, I will. All right. I'll bring that. Don't forget now. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Okay. Mark. I have two things for you. Basically, these will be agenda items for next month's meeting. Uh, number one, our street sweeping contract will be expiring at the end of March, so all the new contracts 
That's with Phillips? Uh, they'll all be Phillips. And, you know, right now, currently, it always been Phillips. We have advertised some years, but nobody, he's the only one that has price. I guess that's one reason I'm bringing it up. Do you want me to put an ad in the paper to see if there's a out there, or do you want to no. basically go with McPhillips, who we've used for a number of years? What's the size of the contract? To re refresh my memory. What is the size of the contract? Yeah. How uh, much? Uh, How many dollars? Uh, it's based on a rate per hour and everything else. I want to say last year, our budget and everything else is... Uh, Seven thousand dollars. Yeah, I was thinking it was under ten. Yep. I don't think there's anybody else that's very interested. No. I, I mean, history has shown that he's the only person that's interested. So, so. Over uh, time, you'll have a, if you have, it's a loyal contractor, you he great. He hasn't raised yeah, his rates. Yeah, the last, last three years, he has not raised three years time. anyway. I mean, why would you? Does a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next thing I have, uh, this also be an agenda item, is that we have to come up with a, uh, we have street name signs all around the village, you know, every corner and everything else. Uh, with new legislation out, everything else, all of our current street name signs will have to be replaced by the year, or actually by January 2018. Every municipality is going through this. Uh, city of Milwaukee figures it's going to cost them over $2 million to replace all their street signs. But uh, What's prompting this? It's a mandate that came out federal from the federal government, government basically, uh, under traffic and else. It actually uh, came out basically in 2010. It was all first yeah. mandated by federal yeah. things that are else. Uh, but are they bigger? Or no. What? Well, they're oh. basically they're the same size. It's just their uh, three... Um, no, basically, well, they're not just three. Yes, three. I'm well, well, it has to be. Have, they have to be more reflective. They have to be look the same color at night as they do during the day, and basically, well, uh, and they can no longer be all capital letters. You can only start with a capital letter, and that has to go to lower, lower case. I've asked this several times before. What's the penalty for not doing it? Not in this spring, but on many other things. Wow. What does anybody actually going to do? I, I'd, I'd like to have an answer to that sometime. Really, what difference does it make? Is anybody going to know the difference? And who's going to come in here and what are we going to get a fine or are well, we going to get excommunicated? My my thing with it is I can see replacing the signs with the newer version when we get. Can't you do it as you go? Yeah, well, basically. Why do it at all? No, exactly. You could not have a country in 2018. <laughs> No, but I, that, I, I, I know it might sound preposterous, but if you don't do it, really, who comes and checks and, and what happens? Um, what are the consequences Basically of not doing well, it? From what? Because who I, knows? Outside of us, if this meeting was in telecast, nobody would even know. <laughs> DOT money, Mark. That's what's, no, I know, but I mean, that's really. That's they're trying to hold you hostage. If this right? is going to cost, how much do you think this is going to cost us? Well, Ten grand? <laughs> Well, it's not on our agenda for this meeting, so we yes. better not discuss it. No, but it will be on our agenda for next month. Meeting, yes. All right, next month we can have at it. <laughs> no, but really. <laughs> Bring that one on, baby. Yes. I don't think it's already a long one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Anything else for the good of the order? Uh, move for adjournment. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, I've been waiting.